Hi Floss Tube. This is Sound Mind Stitching. I'm Chelsea, and this is my channel about cross stitch, embroidery, sewing, maybe quilting one day. Um, thank you so much for watching. I'm really glad to be back. This is my March recap video. Um, I've been tracking more things this month, so I have some numbers to share and lots of other things to share as well. In fact, um, initially I had said in my last video, maybe I would just post once a month, but I kind of have a, a note going on my computer of different things that I could talk about and it's just really long. Um, I have some books to share, um, like books I've enjoyed and some other like cross stitch adjacent stuff. So I think I'm going to do a mid April video as well, but I'll get to that. Um, the first thing I want to say, this is so funny. Um, I have four kids. If you didn't know that, um, my older two boys are 13 and almost 12 and they're into YouTube, like every child their age. Um, and our oldest son is named Steven, who's 13. And he, um, I guess on his Chromebook or I'm not sure where, but maybe even just on the TV, he watches YouTube under my account. And as far as I know, I don't comment on things, but he said, Hey mom, when I'm on my computer, um, it pops up whenever you get a comment on your floss or your YouTube channel. Um, and I said, Oh, okay. And he was like, yeah, he's like, those comments are so nice. They're just, the people just seem really kind. <laughs> And I was like, well, I'm, I hope, I don't, maybe I don't want to know what the comments are like on the videos you, that he watches. But anyway, I thought that was really sweet. And he's right. The comments are always so kind. Um, in fact, uh, I love FlossTube because of the connections. And I got an email after my last video from a viewer um, who said um, she is getting older. She doesn't have time to stitch everything that she has. And so could she mail me some patterns? And she did. Um, thank you so much. I, I didn't ask her permission to say her name, so I don't want to say it, but you know who you are. Thank you so much. Um, some of them I think I'm going to save for a giveaway. Some of them I think I will stitch. So when I do, I will mention that they came from her, but she probably sent me 20 patterns. So it would be a lot to share it all here but that was very happy mail and it was on a very I think it was it was kind of a rough day I don't really remember but I remember it just really brightening that day so thank you so much um other cross-stitching news is since my last video I had a birthday and my birthday present was a kindle so that I can use pattern keeper um I thought for a long time that Pattern Keeper was just for people who do the like heaven and earth full coverage pieces, but um, I've come to realize it could be really helpful for other patterns as well. And maybe I will do a full coverage, I don't know. Um, but I've got it all set up. I'm mostly only using it for that. I have Pattern Keeper and then I have the spreadsheets where I track that I can pull up on there and um, enter information in, but that's pretty much all I'm using it for and I'm fine with that. That's why I wanted it and I got it and it was a great birthday present from my husband. So, um, I'm enjoying using that. I have an FFO slash finish since my last video. I have four starts. <laughs> I have two whips that you've already seen that I worked on and then, um, I do have some plans. I want to share and also I have four free charts um, actually five if you count the finish that I did because it was also free but I have four new four chart new charts they're not new but you've probably never seen them um, four charts to share two are for Mother's Day if if you want to stitch something and then one of them is um, only free for maybe two more days um, or maybe one more day so if you're watching this go look it up quick. Um, but I'll get to that at the end. So I'm going to pull up all my notes so I don't forget. But my first finish slash FFO is this. This is, um, Hair's Mother Day. Blech. Hair's M Mother's Day by Plum Street Samplers. This is a freebie from the Plum Street blog. It is really hard to find it. You might find it if you search Plum Street Samplers mom 
but typing the name of the pattern and Plum Street Samplers will likely not pull this up. The best thing to do is to go look for her, search for her blog and type, go to the freebies category of her blog. I'm going to link it in my notes so you'll be able to go straight to the post, but um, it's just really, it's not super easy to find. But this is the original says like happy day for you and I did change up the colors. This is um, 28 count cashel linen. Oh. I just remembered that was, well, I'll show that later. I got some really cheap fabric from Hobby Lobby. I was gonna show, but I just remembered. Um, anyway, 28 count white cashew linen, two over two. I changed up the wording. This is from a Bible verse, let all you do be done in love. Um, I, I framed the mother rabbit after me, darker brown. I framed the little one after my son Noah. Yellow is his favorite color. I changed the date. And then I added this little heart because once I put the words in, it felt like something was missing, so I just made that little heart. Um, I did this last weekend, Saturday and Sunday, and then I um, just used some. Ooh, that's really blurry. Hold on, let me tilt that up just a, just a hair there. No, no, that's not any better. There we go. Okay, just some flannel. This is from I don't even know where this came from, but it coordinated well. And then I just made a little ribbon and sewed it on top. Um, I got a new little shelf for my dresser where I'm keeping, like, I want to put seasonal things. And so, um, I decided to stitch that. So that's your first free pattern for this video. It'll be in the, in the comments or the notes. I mean, um, now for my starts. So I did iron everything. It looks all really good. Um, the first one that I started, I started on... March 11th because that was my youngest son's birthday and I'm doing a temperature chart for the year that he was born which is 2020 so um, this is my start um, this is from snarky and modern embroidery pull all these strings down um, and I have a link I will link to that pattern um, it is free if you're in the Facebook group but you can also buy it on Etsy so I'll put both links in there so I finished the whole first row and I've started on the second. Each row has 19 days in it, the highs and the lows. So those are the highs and the lows for the first 19 days of January in 2020 in Columbia, South Carolina, which is where we lived. So um, if you didn't watch my video about this, um, we moved to Georgia on March 21st, 2020. So once I get to March 21st, I will switch to the weather here. Um, but this has been really fun. There's 16 stitches in each triangle. Um, and it's, or is it 16 or 10? No, it's 16. Yeah, 16 stitches. So you can get a good, a good amount done. And I've been marking on my sheet. I know this looks like a mess, but I've been marking like which strings I've left hanging because it's really easy to travel to just go behind it if it's just a day or two and that way I'm not having to like keep cutting and restarting thread so it kind of looks messy but it's it's working for now um, I worked on this for three different days in March and I stitched about 668 stitches um, this is 32 count Icelandic gray linen um, and I'm stitching it two over two with DMC and I kind of picked out my own colors um, red is the hottest and purple is the coldest um, yeah so that one is, is is pretty mindless and so sometimes you need a stitch like that you know at least I do um, my second start for March was northern land by Al Forest embroidery so I'll pop pop up a picture of that um, if you will remember, this was going to be my birthday start last year in 2022, and I did start it, and then I stopped and I started it several more times because I couldn't figure out what colors I wanted. So I finally decided to go back to what it was and not stray so far, um, and this is how far I got. So I started in the top left. Um, which I'm usually a top left or a center starter. Um, this only has three colors. I'm using uh, apple fritter. You know what, let me pull it up on my, I actually can't remember what exactly. I remember the names of the colors, but I can't remember the names of the, um, 
of like which kind of if it's I think apple fritter is um is gentle arts oh come on let's see hmm no, I didn't put it on here either okay I'm pretty sure it's gentle arts and also the blue is deep sea by gentle arts and then this like these birds and these tower things is all cherry cordial which is a uh, Karen water lily silk and that's all one thread the pink and the gray um I am in love with this <laughs> I it's coming out even better than I could have imagined um and I'm just loving the variegation on all the colors um this is my very first 36 count it is flax um Edinburgh linen and I'm stitching it one over two. So also my first one over two. I've never stitched with just one strand and I like it. I like you don't have to worry about the threads getting tangled, um, but I'm making good progress. Um, the, the, this, this amount is about 7.1% according to Pattern Keeper. And I'll show you, this is what's really cool about Pattern Keeper is you can see as long as the glare is not bad you can see um I'm zoomed out but that's how much I've gotten done that's the, how big the chart is and that's how much I've gotten done so I felt like that was pretty good I worked on it for about a straight week and got all that done um my next start I had two small starts and I'm, I'm not missing one. Okay, <laughs> so I'm really confused for a second. Um, I needed a small start, something small to do, like in the car, because um, some of those are just so big and I don't like to take them in the car. This is Matroshka by Tiny Modernist. Um, Northern Land, I didn't even say that was by Al Forest Embroidery. <laughs> I didn't even say who the designer was. Um, I have a strong affinity for Russian history and literature. I studied Russian, the Russian language in college um, and actually had planned to spend a year there um, at a university before I met my husband. And then I met him and decided not to go, which I don't necessarily regret, but I just still have such a soft spot in my heart for Russia. Um, not so much Russian leaders and things that they do, but Russia as a cultural thing and <laughs> the people there. I've known some really wonderful people who were from Russia. Um, and so I don't know if that's why I like Al Forest so much or what, but I really want to have maybe above my desk, a Russian wall of just like Russian themed cross stitch. Um, and so, um, actually this is going to be six free patterns because this one's free too. This is Matroshka by Tiny Modernist. Matroshkas are those dolls that you open up and then there's another one inside. This is as far as I've gotten. Um, but this is a, a small, this is just a, just a little one. This is 32 count platinum Lugana. And I kind of changed up the colors to make them a little more muted. Um, but this will be pretty quick and it's, it's just easy to do in the car. I needed something small. So I, uh, I just kind of kitted it up and started working on it and I'll be excited to add that to my Russian collection. Um, my last new start is what I've decided to do for my cousin who's getting married this summer instead of what I had been doing. So I'm going to pop up what I had planned to do. Um, and I was, gonna work on this and it actually was pattern keeper compatible which was great but um I just couldn't figure out the colors I didn't like the colors I was trying to match her wedding colors and I just was struggling with the way this was charted so I went back to the drawing board I didn't want something too big and complicated because I knew I wouldn't have time to finish it and that would be really stressful but then um I found this pattern by Stitch Rovia. So this is called Love Is All You Need. And it reminds me of a die cut, I think is the word, that we were, my husband and I were given when we got married. Um, and actually it's like gotten ruined and it makes me sad, but it was like cut out of paper. And this really reminds me of kind of what it looks like. So I may stitch this twice. I may stitch this again for me and my husband. I don't know, we'll see. But 
This is just one color. I'm gonna use um, DMC 352, which is kind of pretty similar to my cousin's wedding colors, kind of a corally peach. And this is that same 28 count casual linen. Um, stitching it two over two. Um, while I'm while I have this up, I'll talk about this linen that I got. I'm actually gonna grab it. All oh, is right here. Um, I was at Hobby Lobby a week or two ago, and they had a bunch of fabric markdowns. So I got this Rust Murano car, which was a dollar forty nine. Um, this spa Murano car, these are 32 count, also a dollar a dollar twenty-four. I got I think two packages of um, Belfast linen, 32 count, in the natural color. So this is just like a very good neutral. These are both 324, and this is 18 by 27 inch. That's a big piece of fabric. Um, you could stitch multiple things. And then I got 28 count cashew linen in natural so similar to the Belfast but a smaller count um, $2.99 and this 28 count cashew linen for $2.99 so I did that hair's mother day Ma bleh, <laughs> hair's mother's day on the cashew linen and then I cut this piece for this one out and I cut another one out for something I'm going to talk about in a minute and I still have a lot left um, so that was exciting. But I will say, I have no problem buying fabric from Hobby Lobby, especially when it's marked down like that. The one thing I don't like about it is that the edges are all unfinished. Um, in fact, I'll show you on one of these smaller pieces. Um, it doesn't look so bad right now, but once you start stitching, and especially if I'm stitching in hand, which I've been doing more, um, it just starts to unravel really quickly and it's not pleasant and it makes me not want to stitch on it. So the other night, my husband was at a meeting or something and I had some time on my hands. I went through all of my fabric that's in a whip or a kitted project and I used my sewing machine. I don't have a serger and I just did a specialty stitch along, I don't know if you can see, along the edge. I'll put it over here. Um, all around this is just see look but like see this string is coming off but like when I pull it I just need to trim it it's not it's not coming unraveled because I've sewed the edges and I did this to all of my fabric that was in a kit that was raw at the end um, and gosh it just makes such a big difference it makes it feel like a totally different piece of fabric when I'm not worried about it falling apart <laughs> um, yeah so those are my four starts five starts four starts four starts and the Here's Mother's Day was a start and a finish. Um, other than those, I have two whips. One is Star Robot Walker by Awesome Pattern Studios. So I'll pop up a picture. This is my Star Wars kind of project. Um, I worked on this a lot at the beginning of the month once I started, once I got my Kindle. Um, that has made this one so much easier. This is a full coverage piece it's not huge it's 150 by 150 but and there's not confetti but there's blocks of color but it's it's a lot and the Kindle has just pattern keeper has just changed my whole experience of it so this is how far I've gotten um, which looks pretty good but I'm only well I will tell you how far I've gotten um, I can do that very specifically I did stitch on it for on 13 separate days, some of which were just in the car in the morning, so it wasn't a ton. Um, but it um, it is it is really fun to stitch on. So yeah, this is a pretty good representation of how of the percentage. The margins are going to be tight, um, but this is about 15%, which is kind of crazy. It looks like it should be more than that. Um, it kind of scares me that it's more than that because of the fabric <laughs> but I, I checked it's big enough um, so yeah 15% I stitched on it 1629 stitches this month and I'd already stitched almost 2,000 before once I marked the ones I'd already done in Pattern Keeper I'd already done that many so um, this is a really good one too for like watching a show because it's a lot of color blocks like these are just gonna be filled in I've already done the outline I just have to fill them in um, 
so yeah and this is six just 16 count ivory ivory ada it's nothing fancy but i also did um do the same thing with the edge of this this side was already okay but these sides i did all these on my sewing machine it was very easy it just took a few minutes and now it's not going to come apart my last whip is one that i've been working on for the last week or so um, I'm not going to take this out of the cue snap because it's just so big and you can still you can see it all the way that it is. Um, this is Pandemic by or Pandemic Sampler by Sarsi Girl who commented on my Instagram post. I felt like famous <laughs> when she commented. Um, this one has a little story. Here's so okay, let's move the where in the world is that? <laughs> okay. I know some people don't do this with their threads, but I do. And it might be bad but oh well um it does kind of leave there we go <laughs> okay just ignore that little black one um this is on 32 count I gotta look it up flax Belfast linen um this is a much lighter fabric than the called for which she dyed herself it's a dark much darker and so I did change the colors to show up well um this one at the beginning of the month, I was avoiding it because I had noticed that there was kind of like a, maybe like an oil stain or, or something like around this area. And I wasn't sure that it was going to get covered up with stitches. And so it was bothering me so much that it was there that I decided I was going to risk trying to wash it out and then see what happened. Because I didn't want to keep stitching and then find out, like I was afraid that it was going to be like right here and it would be even more noticeable if it was in between stitches. So I used a little, little, little bit of Dawn dish soap and scrubbed it gently, let it dry, and it all came out. Whatever it was, it came out. So thank the Lord, because I really liked this one. I'd already put a lot of time into it. Um, and once I got the stain out, I was so excited to work on this. Um, this is about, I think it's almost 15%. I'm gonna stitch a little bit more tonight when I'm done with this video, but, um, it's almost one entire page. This is all the motifs on the first page. The only part, I think the first page stops about here. So there is this like house and the roof that need to be filled in, but all the other motifs are done um, on the page. And I'm just kind of doing the border as I go. Um, the border is using more of that apple fritter um, that I'm using on Northern Land. And I just, I might need to buy some stock in that color because I am not a red person. When I see people with like red samplers, I can appreciate the beauty of them, but I don't love red. I don't really like bright red, but this deep red that kind of turns into this lighter is is working for me and I do like it. Um, but this sampler is just so fun. <clears throat> I, I don't know how I feel about samplers in general. I don't love the alphabets on them. Like I, there's, there's a few that I have saved, like on Etsy, that um, have alphabets, but the other stuff in it has to just, I just have to absolutely love it. I don't, I don't want an alphabet on a sampler in my house. I just, it's just not my, not my thing. So this one has no words. And I may actually include like some initials or something when I'm all done, I'm not sure, but um, as samplers go, I'm enjoying this one. I feel like it's kind of like a, I don't know, a rebel sampler or something. It's not your normal sampler. So um, I am enjoying that and I'm hoping to try to get a, about 7% done each month, 7.5%. Uh, I worked on that for six straight days. So that is my last whip. Um, and going forward, um, I do have a few starts planned for April, but I am going to wait and see how I feel. We have two special days coming up in April. One is our anniversary. Um, we'll have been married for 14 years in April, which is tomorrow, April 18th. And then my daughter's birthday is April 24th. So I have two things kitted up for to be starts for those days. Um, and I probably will start them. Let's be honest. It's, it's too fun not to, but I also have another Russian Russia piece, um, that I've kitted up that I might, I might start 
just for fun. Um, but in the middle of April, I would like to do another video um, where I maybe share some whatever I've been stitching or I might save it for the end of the month, but I wanted to share the best books I've read from January to March. Um, I'd rather do it once a month, but because I was not on floss tube, I'm behind sharing those. But I read um, a pretty good amount. I've read almost 30 books since the beginning of the year. So I generally read nine or 10 books a month. Um, and I've got some really, I've read some really good ones this year. So I'd love to share those. Um, I also was gonna share some books I got from the library about quilting and cross stitching and sewing that have been really great resources. I am a huge proponent of the library um, for gathering information, for learning things. I love YouTube and I love watching videos, but there's, so there's something about holding a book in your hand um, and being able to just reference it that I think is really helpful in certain situations. So I found some really cool books I want to share. Um, I want to share more freebies because I've got so many freebies. I'm working on a, a resource list, a, a spreadsheet that I hopefully can share with all the freebies that I share so you can go look for it and search for seasons and themes. Um, but there's so many freebies out there and I'm excited to share them. And finally, in the middle of April, I want to share my May plans because I'm going to try something that I have come up with. I think I've not seen it anywhere. So if someone else is already doing this, then I apologize. I'm not trying to steal it, but I don't know of it. <laughs> um, Mini Mania 2023. So I have 10 charts. They're all free. They're all pretty small. Each one is connected to a different season or holiday. And I have them kitted up with thread, with um, fabric, and either on Pattern Keeper or the printed chart if it wasn't going to work. And I'm going to use one of those little like digital spinning wheels and every day spin the wheel and work on one of those 10 patterns. Um, and just see what happens. I don't know. I may not get to all of them, but my hope is that I'll get a lot of them started, a little bit of progress. And then going forward, I'll go back to those when it's the correct season or holiday. So for example, I have a, um, well, hold on, <laughs> let me remember. Oh yeah. I have one that is uh, a summer theme. It's like all these little like popsicles and ice cream. It's really cute. Um, so I'll start it in May and then, you know, in July, if I'm looking for something small to work on, I can work on that. Um, I have a Harvest Alphabet chart by, I think, Heart and Hand. Um, so again, I'll start it and then I'll finish it this fall if I don't finish it in May. Um, so I may not work on anything else. I'm, other than my cousin's wedding thing, I'm gonna work on that. But other than that, I just wanna work on these smalls. And I think it might be kind of fun. I, I can't tell you how much joy this little pillow that I've now <laughs> lost on my desk. I can't tell you how much joy this has brought me. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I think because it was just such instant gratification to finish it in two days and then to just be able to like sew it up and display it right away. Um, it's just so simple, but it's, it, I don't know. I was just shocked. It, it was, it made me so happy to work on this and I love the bigger pieces and I enjoy a big challenge. But man, it's it's kind of how I feel about reading. Um, there were a few years, not last year, but the three years prior that I read close to 200 books over the course of the year. Um, and I love setting big goals like that. Um, I love seeing, man, how many books have I read? But sometimes um, I just pick a book regardless of like how it fits into my goals. Like one some years, you know, it's like, well, I need to read this many books by the end of the month to meet my goal. And it's like, well, why would I start like a 22 hour audiobook? It'll take me so long to read it, but I just want to read it and I just want to enjoy it. And, um, and I don't care about the goal. <laughs> so I like the big patterns. I love, you know, all these big things, but truth be told at the rate I'm going, 
very few of these big ones you've seen are going to get finished this year. You know, the pandemic, that Star Wars thing. Um, I doubt I'll finish any of those this year, but I can finish these smaller ones and have them out and they just make me so happy. So, um, I'm trying to go by, go by that when I can. Um, cause that's the whole point of this, right? It, um, I started that Mother's Day one last Saturday. Today's Friday. I don't think I said that. It's March 31st. <laughs> um, but we were, so I just got kind of emotionally triggered by something last weekend that was hard. And working on that was just really therapeutic. So um, I'd love to have those kind of on hand so that I can, can work on them. And it can just be something really easy. Um, so with all that, I have four more freebies. So I've already shared two. I've shared Hair's Mother's Day and Matryoshka by Tiny Modernist. Um, I have four more to show you. So the first one is called Mother's Day. It's by Caterpillar Cross Stitch, and I'll link all these below. This is a free chart. Um, it does say Best Mum, so if you're in America, you might want to make it an O, but I think that should be pretty easy. Um, I hope this is really cute. Um, and you could totally finish it by Mother's Day if you started soon. Um, the second free chart is also called Mother's Day. It's by Modern Folk Embroidery. Also says I love mum, <laughs> or it says mum. So again, you just make it an O. Just just close off that U and it should be good. Um, this is a really, um, you know, depending on your mom, maybe she'd prefer the more kind of modern one from Caterpillar Cross Stitch, or if she's more vintage, you could do this one. Um, if you don't want to stitch for Mother's Day but have a different plan, um, this Spring Cottage by Crosetta Gogo is part of a series. Um, please ignore the sound of my three year old talking in his bed. Um, she is a spring, she is all the seasons and Christmas, and maybe two Christmases. The link for this one. Um, goes to her all of her free patterns. You have to scroll down, but you can see all the other cottages. Um, but the spring one is pretty fun. And finally, this one's only going to be good if you're watching this like almost as soon as I post it because I think they said they were only going to do this until April 2nd. But um, Twin Peak Primitives is um, discontinuing or retiring one of their patterns that I think was a market release in the past. It's called Old Archery Clothes. Old Archery Close or Close, I'm not sure, Close or Close, um, just a, these rows, a row of houses, and I just thought it was really cool. I don't think I'd do the words, but the houses are cool. Um, so quickly go add that to your cart, it's free, it, you get the download right away. Um, but I thought, I think all of those are, well, that one's not necessarily spring, but because it was time sensitive, I wanted to share. Um, I get, I spent like several hours last week looking for free patterns from designers you've heard of. And I have seriously so many, so, so many, like probably over a hundred right now that I have found and I'm documenting and making sure that you can access them um, and making sure I have a link. Um, of course, making sure that they're not like copyrighted or in some or someone else is stealing them. Most of them are just on the designer's website. So if you have a designer you love, I highly recommend typing in their name and freebie. Many of them have free charts that you can, um, you can check out and I'm super excited to keep sharing them. And again, all of the little mini manias that I want to do are all free. Um, to give you a little taste, I've got, uh, two Al Forest Embroidery, no one is surprised, a Silver Creek Samplers, uh, the Drawn Thread, Corsetta Go Go, Plum Street Samplers, Heart and Hand, Sweet Wing Studio, Doreen Jones, and Heartstring Samplery. So nine different designers that I'll be focusing on in May. And many of them have many more free ones in addition to the ones that I'm going to do. So you can look yourself or just keep watching and I'll keep sharing and eventually get this spreadsheet in some semblance of like order that I'm ready to share it. Um, if you know of free patterns that I can add to my list and share with others, I'd love to love to see them. Um, 
you know, when I was, I've been getting ready to film this for a couple days. Like I ironed everything and I've had my notes, had all my links ready. Um, but then today was just, it was a day. And I honestly wasn't sure if I was gonna film because I just did not feel like it. But I knew that if I started talking about stitching, I would come around and that has been the case. So thank you floss tubers for being people who like to watch videos some of which might be mine. Um, I I thought to myself, what if I don't post a video and I just keep doing what I've been doing and I never tell anyone about the things that I've found, the things I'm enjoying, and that would be fine, right? But um, man, it's really fun to share it with you guys um, and to hear what you're doing and to connect with you guys either on YouTube or on Instagram if if you're on there. So if if you're a viewer and I don't and you have an Instagram handle, I'd love to follow you. So please leave me your Instagram name or find me on Instagram and message me. It's just at Sound Mind Stitching. Um, my other Instagram handle is at Chels Does Things. And then my husband and I have an account where we share our garden home, which it's not been super exciting these last few months, but man, spring is gearing up. We've got peppers, we've got beans, we've got lettuce already in the ground, already growing. We've already been picking strawberries. Um, so the garden's about to explode. I'm about to be making pickles all day long. <laughs> um, so if you're interested in that stuff, you can, um, check that out. It's the Ramblin' Rectory. I'll put that below. Um, I just realized you could finally see my shirt. I leaned back a little bit, but this was a shirt I got at a conference this year. Introverted, but willing to discuss books. Um, I really do love talking about books, and I don't want to short you on the book talk, so this next episode will be not as much stitching. You could totally skip it, but um, if you like to read and you like good books, it might be interesting. So that's all I have for tonight. Um, thanks for watching. If I forgot something, just ask. Um, I think I said all the important details, but, um, I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful to have this place to share something that brings me so much joy. Um, and I hope that you find joy in whatever you're stitching. I'll see you next time.